Hi everyone, uh, welcome again to another episode of Experts Live India podcast. Uh, today I have two of my very good friends, uh, Stoyan of course, um, and Bob. Hey guys. Hello. How are you Hello. guys doing today? Very good and very warm. So uh, even warm. though I'm not in India, it's still warm out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in, in India, I think it's, it's actually starting to get a bit colder because m- monsoon time is coming. There is no monsoon in Europe, I think, is there? It's just no. like winter and summer. Oh, well, we have the <laughs> fall. Yes. Oh, yeah. And the spring, of course. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cool. So today we are going to talk about something very uh, close to us, I would say. All three of us, we have been talking, uh, we have been working in... Uh, both SCOM and Azure Monitor for a while. Um, so, uh, so today we're going to talk about the old debate that has uh, been recently, well, I say recently, but I think in the last, what now, three years, the debate has been going on whether SCOM is being replaced by Azure Monitor. Um, well, there are cases to be, there's a case to be made in both directions. Maybe yes, maybe no. Depends on uh, your use case and your uh, organization's policies, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so the, that today is the goal of the discussion today. So let's get started. All right, guys, so which camp are you in? Are you in the SCOM camp or in this Azure Monitor camp? I'm still in the SCOM camp uh, for now. (laughs) For now. 100%. uh, I was switching sides for a couple of months. So uh, yeah, uh, a couple of days on the Azure Monitor side, a couple of days on the SCOM side, but I felt like SCOM is the one for me. yeah. Okay. So do you think this you're staying with SCOM because SCOM is the one for you personally, where you prefer SCOM, or do you think that that's where the trend is going or that's where the industries are going? Mm, I don't think it's it's fully the, the trend in the industry. I think the industry is going both directions, basically. There's, there's a lot uh, of... Uh, of uh, the classic IT, on-prem IT, own data centers. A lot of customers are there and a lot of customers are staying there. But we also see a lot of hybrid, especially hybrid. And this is where actually both products come into play very well. And if you have a company who is fully in the cloud, so has no, you know, no uh, local systems and especially is also going into cloud like Uh, containerization or only doing software as a service, like only having a website and not having a server with a website on it. You know, that is basically one of these differences. So if they are really cloudy in that direction, then yeah, I would uh, certainly go uh, as your monitor for that one or maybe another tool, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, you said um, some things about uh, hybrid and I am all about hybrid nowadays. (laughs) <laughs> so I am. Uh, so my responsibilities at job uh, include uh, selling hardware uh, for a hybrid um, cloud or a hybrid adoption. Uh, so I exactly know what you're talking about. So there's again not every uh, workload or not every company can go to cloud. Uh, there has to be some footprint on prem also because of various reasons, maybe data sovereignty, data privacy, or simply land of uh, law of the land. Uh, but yeah, so even there we see this trend a lot where we, on the cloud side, they use um, Azure Monitor, of course. And then when they are on-prem, for their on-prem applications, on-prem workloads, they continue to use uh, their on-prem software. May it be SCOM, may it be something else, but they uh, keep using on-prem tools. They don't always migrate to Azure Monitor. Hmm. Actually, Sam, you're correct about this, but uh, Bob is also correct uh, by saying that if you, for example, have an infrastructure in Azure, which consists mainly of VMs, then you most probably also use SCOM instead of Azure Monitor to monitor them. 
or at least at least for the in-depth monitoring use cases. I mean, exactly. we all know uh, how good Azure Monitor is in certain areas, and we also know uh, that uh, it cannot replace COM in other areas. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Agree. Um, actually, just dawned on me, maybe a little bit too late uh, to address that, but let's quickly talk about what SCOM is, uh, because there might be some people who have not heard of SCOM uh, or not, not even may have heard of Azure Monitor, for that matter. So let's go quickly address what SCOM is, what Azure Monitor is. I think it, it, there is no better person to present SCOM than, than Bob, so... Than SCOM, <laughs> oh, please. SCOM, <laughs> Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Microsoft has a monitoring product. Uh, they bought it back in 1999 and mm -hmm. then converted it into Operations Manager. Back in the days, Microsoft Operations Manager 2000. And later on, where they created a system center suite. So that's where the S and the C comes from, from system center. And then Operations Manager is added to that. So we've had several iterations and it's basically built for monitoring infrastructure, servers like OSs and applications running on those servers. So that is what it is built for. And uh, we have just seen the latest iteration, which is COM 2022 being released a few months ago. So it's still in construction and, uh, and building up. And SCOM is mainly a monitoring framework by itself. So it's like an automation engine with agents and the receiving end in a database on the back end. And uh, the agents, they, uh, they receive their configuration, what they need to monitor, what they need to send back to the central location through what is called management packs. And there are management packs provided by Microsoft, let's say for uh, Windows operating system, for SQL databases, for IIS, Active Directory, and so on. And there are third party vendors as well. Let's say management packs for Dell, uh, HP, um, uh, VMware, those kind of things as well. So uh, some are provided for free, others are provided for money and they are extending the monitoring platform. So that is what basically SCOM is. Um, it's good in infrastructures, operating systems and applications living on operating systems and it's using an agent so that is also what sets it apart, let's say, from uh, if you don't have an agent on a machine, if you cannot put an agent on a machine. For example, in a full cloud scenario where you only get a website and you are not able to access the IIS or Windows Server behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. So in a um with the recent trend with the growing uh, um you know the, the growing number of services that azure is providing one of them being serverless computing or serverless uh, hosting or application hosting whatever so what you just do is you just host your um you place or copy your code and the application will run so there is you don't necessarily get the access to the underlying in infrastructure that is actually running that application so SCOM, like Bob said, being an, an agent-based um, monitoring tool, if you can't access the agent, uh, sorry, if you can't access the infrastructure, you can't install the agent. Um, so in those cases, I think it's natural to go for uh, another Azure service that is Azure Monitor. Yeah, so, there are actually some management packs uh, such as really recently released uh, for Kubernetes, for example which is you know, more of the uh, serverless uh, computing, it's containerized. And there are now also management packs for that, but also Azure Monitor also has, an, uh, has plugins, as I call them, uh, solutions for that. Right. So it is possible. So I think those management packs, if, if you can't install an agent, they might be working uh, API-based. Do they work yes. by, yeah. Yeah, they just work API-based because you have a machine, a monitoring machine, uh, even if it's a SCOM server itself, and they can reach out and grab information through the APIs, whether through PowerShell or through whatever else uh, it, uh, it uses. And this is also how the management packs work for SCOM, which are monitoring also the cloud. So M365, Office 365, Azure, 
those kind of things. Uh, there are managing packs for SCOM to monitor cloud, and that's all using APIs. Right. Um, so, uh, Stoyan, so you've been working a lot with uh, a lot of customers on the field, uh, especially with SCOM. Uh, so we've been talking about the agent and agent installation and how SCOM is an agent-based monitoring tool. Can you tell us very quickly about why at all do you need an agent? What, what's the function of an agent? Right. So uh, the agent gives you a um, certain level of flexibility when gathering the data because it's installed locally on the monitor system. It has access to WMI, uh, it can query WMI, it has access to the registry, it can run different scripts. And by doing this, um, you're, you have a bigger, let's say, possibility to gather all the data you need. Um, then again, if you compare it to agentless monitoring, where most of the requests come are coming over the RPC protocol, so RPC calls, there, in the most cases, you are limited also by firewall rules um, and a number of certain other factors. Um, the agent provides you also different possibilities to, um, to manage the respective monitor system, execute different tasks on it, um, and in general, it's much more common approach when doing system monitoring compared to agentless monitoring. Right. So... Agents are basically, they, they, uh, it's a piece of software that sits on your machine and talks to the machine. That's correct. The, the agent is, is uh, nothing else than a, a piece of software, like you said, running a service. A service running, actually, uh, it has some cache where all the information, all the configuration from the management server are cached. Then um, they are, let's say, managed and handled locally on the system. And then again, they are sent back to um, the, let's say, the mother or the management server, uh, where the, all the information monitoring data is being, um, it's being handled and it's being inserted into a database. Right. So the management server is basically we can call it as the central point, that is the focal point of uh, everything of, of a SCOM uh, deployment. That's really the case. Either a management server or a gateway, That th those are the instances an agent reports to. So uh, either the agent gets back directly to a management server or uh, it gets back to a management server again, but over a gateway. Right. Uh, gateways is, let's say, let's clarify it for the audience. The gateway is actually like a kind of proxy system um, which gathers all the data and then uh, sends it back to the management server. Yes. So, yeah, there are a few reasons why you would want to set up a, a gateway uh, server instead of a management server, but let's not get that uh, deep into the technical side just yet. Um, so all of this, of course, uh, since this is on your infrastructure, it also sits on your infrastructure, right? So you are the one responsible for deploying um, installing, managing, and troubleshooting everything about SCOM. Yes. Um, so let's move on to Azure Monitor then. So what um, is Azure Monitor? So in my experience previously, I've been working with Azure Monitor a lot uh, for a couple of years. Um, so Azure Monitor is a cloud-based monitoring system, let's say, by Microsoft. So if you have heard of Azure, um, Azure is the cloud, um, public cloud oper you know, operating model by Microsoft. Um, and Azure Monitor, on the other hand, um, well, it also requires agents, uh, but it's based more on the log-based uh, information. And so when you install a log operator, you know, uh, has it changed? I don't know because I haven't caught up with uh, Azure Monitor lately, but so there is a log analytics uh, agent that goes into um, into the source machine, uh, and then that collects all the logs, and then it sends it back to Azure in a workspace, and then that is where you process the data and you you set up some rules, you set up some thresholds, saying that okay, so if this if the particular value of this particular metric, you know, crosses uh, that threshold, then just let me know, right? So you send me an alert. Uh, so, so basically, 
It's an end-to-end -end monitoring solution. It collects granular performance and uh, utilization data. Uh, it can collect the data um, as well from cloud and also from on-premise infrastructures. Um, yeah. You can analyze the data, detect and diagnose different issues across your applications. Um, there are, of course, a um, number of possibilities to correlate also the data. Um, you can drill down. Um, also, you can create visualizations, alerting, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Yes. Yeah, so it was basically, f at first, it was in the advisor uh, days when uh, when it started uh, several years ago. I can't even remember how many years, but it's uh, still a lot of years ago when it started. It was basically just taking the SCOM agent and using that to forward data into the cloud, which was in the beginning mostly text-based. So it's uh, like a massive storage. You just throw yeah. anything at it, events, IIS logs, for example, but also performance counters because that's just you know also in text uh, this counter this uh, entry and sending it all up later on they split their storage on the cloud side a little bit to keep the metrics separately from the uh, from the logs so that's now separated because that makes it easier to handle and index so they have a massive amount of machine power behind it first of all storage obviously but then a lot of indexing so you can then quickly access all of that data from the cloud. So it's using the KQL language, which has been used in the past by the other monitoring products in the cloud as well. And you can basically say, hey, I want to know uh, from this counter or I want to know from this log, I want you to find this entry or something with this in the name and give me a result. And then you can make those queries really complicated. You can connect it to other pieces of data if you want to. I've seen some really, really nice examples uh, of that stuff as well, just because you can <laughs> sometimes. Uh, Cameron is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend who has also been doing a lot of uh, nice stuff with that. Um, and then basically based on that output, you know, you get a, like a small table or a list of items. You could say, hey, give me either an alert or give me a visualization like a graph or, you know, something. And then you can show that in a in a dashboard uh, uh, on, the, on the portal, on the Azure yes. portal or in a workbook. Right. Yeah. It's, but it is slowly changing. Also, the agent behind it is slowly changing. It's not just a SCOM agent anymore. Uh, or what we call the MMA agents. There's now also an AMA agent coming out uh, with where it is transitioning to. So they don't rely anymore on the classic agent. They are slowly drifting apart a little bit because their functionality is different and they are not only used for monitoring anymore. It's also security and management from the cloud side. For example, Azure Arc. Yeah. So that is why those agents, they kind of migrate a little bit. They change uh, according well, to what it is for the cloud. Yeah, towards the unification, I think, right? So even in cloud, if you want to manage something, some some on-prem estate with cloud services, there are a few agents, um, uh, you know, for each service. So like you said, Azure Arc is another agent. Then there was an Azure Monitor Log Analytics agent. Uh, then there's also... Even in Azure Monitor, I remember there, there have been a couple of different agents or uh, different iterations of the agents. Yeah. And with each release, I think they're trying to uh, go towards uh, you know, a point where they're unifying all the functionality into one agent. So just let's just call it Azure Agent. Um, and if you go and install that, you would be able to leverage the same uh, agent for all the Azure services. Yes, it uses extensions now. Basically, yeah. so the, it's just an agent which is just a workflow engine. So that's basically, you know, as short as you can call it. Just yeah. run this on that time, and then you have extensions giving it the uh, the method to do to handle either I don't know backups or monitor something or implement automation and those kind of things. So those are just extensions to an existing agent. Cool. Um, so let's talk about the history a little bit. Uh, so Bobby already told us about how SCOM has evolved. So it started in like what, MOM 2002, 
no, 2000. 2000. Yeah, that's when I started uh, as well. I think in the year 2002, I started with uh, with the product. Oh, nice. So what about you, Stoyan? I'm, I compared to Bob, I'm pretty new to the topic. <laughs> I started with SCOM 2012 R2. Oh, this nice. was my first version of SCOM. The first version of SCOM I touched. Um, to be honest, I was immediately, um, let's say, captured by the tool. And since then, since my first, um, let's say, try with with Com, I'm working with all the versions that follow. Nice. So, what year are we talking about? Is that 2012? Uh, I started a bit later. Uh, it was 2013 or 14. Not quite sure where I first touched the 2000. 12 R2 version of SCOM. Mm -hmm. um, it was not 2012 for me. Although there is a version of SCOM which is not R2, which is 2012 version. And I think it got released in 2012. Yeah. But uh, Bob can say more about it. Yep, around that time. <laughs> <laughs> around yeah, that so time. I personally, I did start. So I did start with a 2007 version of SCOM. But it wasn't until 20, I don't know, 16. Uh, the client uh, that I was working with, they had like two different uh, deployments of SCOM. One was 2007 and the other was 2012 R2. So they were trying to migrate from 7 to mm -hmm. R2 to uh, 2012. Uh, that was, I think, around 2015, 2016. That is where, uh, that is when I started getting involved with uh, forums a little more. And that is where I met both of you guys, with, of course. Uh, I, I met Stoyan first, I think, right? In in forums. That was the case, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was what four years ago now? Five years? I, I think five years ago, yeah. Or or even even six, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> we have a long way uh, back, so to say. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that is the SCOM journey. So after 2000, um, there was SMOM, then it evolved into SCOM, and then yeah. uh, different iterations and different versions. Mm -hmm. What about Azure Monitor? Because I remember uh, it was it was called OMS before. Opera what's called Operations Management Suite, something? Yep. Yeah, but then that was also meant as a combination, right? So it wasn't. It's it's not the monitoring solution that was actually like a suite, like like a, a SKU that you can uh, buy as a license. So it was actually including backup and something else. Okay. Uh, but it was not the name of the monitoring solution behind it. At that moment, it was still uh, called uh, log analytics as well, as it still is called as well in the back end now. Yes. But now it's just a part of Azure Monitor is a log analytics to basically collect and you know analyze. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it started with as part of the OMS, which was, if I understand correctly, it was actually a different console than the SCOM, as uh, than the Azure Public Console. Yeah, it was a it was a separate portal, but actually it started a little bit earlier. It was uh, it started as the uh, advisor, so that's okay. that's the start of uh, of this story, and it was several years earlier actually. I can't re exactly remember the year. Um, you know, we first heard about it in a, in an MVP summit uh, while talking to some uh, members of the old SCOM team who you know crossed into the cloud to build all of this. So mm -hmm. this is uh, this is how I got to uh, got to uh, to know this product and play with it before the general public uh, could play with it. So that's uh, it, it's it was really nice and really fun also and I have, I have a separate uh, console, but it's basically was at that moment still based on just you know creating management packs which just gather information from the scom agents it's the same the same thing and it looked the same th same way as well especially if you look in scom you can actually see all of the management packs there at that moment but there are some some changes obviously and you could do some nice uh you know advisor things so basically it was also meant to not just monitor if something is good or bad what you know scom is meant to do to alert you on stuff but also to do an analysis. For example, it checks through your SQL server and it looks for best practices, those kind of uh, things. So that is basically the advisor side of things, 
which is later also carried on towards the security side, which was at, you know, like until last year, security center, where it gives you advice on best practices settings. It doesn't say you it's wrong or right, but maybe this is better. And that's uh, also a difference, right? Right. Um, uh, yeah, that makes me uh, realize something. So in the recent past, Azure has moved more towards log-based uh, operations. Because so for everything nowadays, I think for a lot of services, you use uh, logs, not only for Azure Monitor, but also for um, what Azure Sentinel, like you said, Security Center. That is also where you use logs. Um, yes, there's, yes. there's also, I think another service, what's it called? Data, I don't remember. It's a data archive or something, data backup. Or There is some, there's some service I used that very briefly worked with. That also, uh, you know, worked with logs. Um, so maybe that is where the industry is going today. Yeah, I, I mean, to... you can just dump everything in logs and security log is also a log yeah. in the end. So it's just text-based in the end. And you can dump all of that into the huge cloud services, which have, well, for us, let's say, limitless uh, storage and, uh, and processing capability in our terms. And if you need to replicate that, for example, inside of a data center, uh, for example, SCOM had a service attached to it, basically, uh, for audit collection services, ACS. Um, but what you see is that you quickly get a database of like two terabytes in SQL. Um, and you are, that's only for like two weeks of data. And then you need to run some reports on it. And that's, that, that gives you some limitations. And if you throw it up into the cloud, you have much more processing. You have now machine learning, artificial intelligence. So that's more the Sentinel side of things. So yeah, if you want to like be serious about monitoring security uh, and these kind of things, security logs, the auditing, then yeah, that would be one of the things where hybrid actually comes in. So use COM for monitoring your systems and use the Azure Monitor slash Sentinel uh, things to uh, to monitor your security uh, items uh, and posture. So yeah. that would be Bob your uh, the alternative. Uh, to the audit collection services in the cloud. So log yeah. analytics and all the querying for the data where you are able to get the data um, in a quick way. Yeah, it was basically the first thing when we saw the product like years ago at the MVP summit, you know, just the basis of it. It was basically the first thing we said, okay, if you want to take one feature out of SCOM and put it in the cloud, and this is the one. Right, so immediately just move it there because you cannot simply work with an ACS database. It's just too large, too limited amount of time. There's no uh, no analytics, no real analytics over it, right? So no AI, ML, uh, machine learning, and Sentinel has all of that. You know that is that is basically what it's meant for. I mean, there's also other products like Splunk, but if you compare the Microsoft solution, I think it's it, it comes out as, as a cheaper one, but um, yeah, SCOM cannot replicate that kind of uh, behavior because it's just too much data in too short amount of time. And there's no analytics, uh, no big analytics AI machine behind it. And that's what the cloud offers you. Yeah, so I remember a funny story about that actually. So in the first uh, edition of Experts Live India, um, I had SCOM's product team um, give give a session uh, in, in, in the conference. And actually, I won't drop the name, but the product manager of the whole system center um, suite was also there. Um, so there were some questions about SCOM. Um, and one of them was ACS. I think a couple of them were ACS related questions. Mm -hmm. um, he actually himself, he was quite surprised. So, he said we never knew that there's actually that that much requirement that there's then that many people still using ACS on SCOM. <laughs> yeah. Microsoft themselves, these the SCOM product team themselves, they were not. I think they kind of just abandoned the idea of ACS and they never worked towards improving. Um, the the, 
it's, it, it, it works as is. So it, it it's just a, a finished product basically. So it's sitting there, you can use it, you can still use it now. Um, but there's no no changes coming to that side of the product. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not going to happen. Mm, interesting. Well, so what do you, what in your opinion, Bob, especially you, I know you've been working with uh, Azure Monitor also uh, recently. Um, when, what do you see where the um, where the pull is, you know, is it more towards Scrum? Is it more towards Azure Monitor? Now, of course, I understand the answer would be like, it depends <laughs> to very, yes. very political, it depends. Um, but in your opinion, in your experience, uh, also in your story, um, why are people moving on to Azure Monitor if they are? And if they're staying in SCOM, then why? What are the use cases? So I would say uh, those customers who are mostly on-prem or they are using full VMs in the cloud, so creating a full VM with Windows and then they install their application on it, then it's still SCOM, which is the best solution. Um, I would still say hybrid actually in that case because uh, then they are they have resources in the cloud, so there will be uh, Azure Monitor anyway. There will be data coming from it, like CPU, disk usage, uh, memory, those kind of things anyway. Um, so in that case, hybrid would be the best. And if there are companies who are really becoming more cloudy and moving really off of the on-prem environment and really moving into the cloud which is usually then also combined with containerization and full software as a service kind of uh, offerings, then yeah, that will be uh, Azure Monitor or other uh, mon cloud-based monitoring related uh, services. Yeah, for sure. But I think I, I've been saying this for years, I think the uh, the hybrid solution would be, uh, would be the best. I think I did, uh, did one also in, uh, in Express Live India uh, two years ago, yes. where I talked about the hybrid side, where I had uh, the, the nice picture of a Pegasus in there. Pegasus, I remember. Uh, <laughs> between uh, between a, uh, an eagle and a horse, basically. Yeah. Um, so you have your your stable side on the SCOM, on the ground, and, uh, and it's running. And you have your cloudy part, which is the eagle in that case. And if you make that hybrid, they become better together. So, uh, especially I, if you have resources in both sides, let's say. Yeah, since that day, I actually didn't, I forgot to ask you, since that day, I wondered, have you, did you make that image yourself or did you? No, did it's you actually know? a picture of a toy, a kid's toy. So <laughs> it, has, it has sparkles on it as well. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it was, okay, nice it was quite impressive. It was quite impressive. This was still before the time that we uh, that we hired Nagesh uh, to do the graphics. So that was just <laughs> just me playing around. Okay, nice. Um, so uh, last thing about this um, SCOM versus Azure Monitor thing. Uh, what, uh, in your opinion, um, is the learning time, learning curve, uh, learning efforts? Um, is one easier than the other? Do you think, or is it like? just a matter of what kind of skills you have. Yeah, I think it's it's what kind of skills you have. Um, let's say SCOM is, um, it's an easy product once you know how it works. And um, well, not to say too much about it, but we actually do have trainings uh, for that at Topcore. Um, but we, we actually have found that there are some people who have been working for years in the field and do not understand the, the concepts very well. If you do not understand the concept of SCOM, then it's really difficult to work with it in an effective way. So that is when you need some to have some training. It's only a few days, and then you know you know you 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 have a good start. For the um, the Azure Monitor side, I think so. You you need less training on let's say how how to get an agent on something. You know the, all of that stuff is uh, is less. Um, if you just want to use the product uh, with the default settings. Those kind of things, I think it's also quite easy to learn, although there have been changes again, you know, like working with workbooks, you have to learn how, how that works and how to use it effectively. And especially if you want to do deeper monitoring. So in SCOM, that would mean creating your own management packs, you know, the easy way or the difficult way, you have your choices there. Um, but in Azure Monitor, then it means 
basically still having less information to to dig through less less examples about how to create a real monitoring solution which is separate from what the default is so i think that is that is a learning curve and of course you need to learn how kql works uh so the query language and that is uh, yeah it also takes some time but it's not not much different from having to learn powershell or some other you know uh querying language or scripting language it's yeah once you go into it and you get some examples and then you learn more and more it should be uh, very doable yeah um so, yeah so you've been for, uh, mvp for how many years now five six six right six okay so i think primarily your focus or your contributions have been scum related if i'm not wrong so you also have powershell scripts and you of course you will have some complementary supplementary uh, content to go along with it but the primary i think focus is on scum um, so let's say you you have been a major teacher or a major guide uh, for people who have recently started with scom and when you started with azure monitor how do you think in your opinion that compares scom the ease of using scom versus azure monitor so first of all what i would i think i have a bit different opinion um compared to bob so bob said so it's a monitoring tool um but still, in my opinion, SCOM has uh, some complexity bounds to it. Um, I mean, nevertheless, it's an enterprise-grade monitoring tool. And with enterprise comes so also a certain level of complexity. I would not expect it to be otherwise. I would not expect a, an enterprise monitoring tool to be a simple one. Okay. That's the first thing. That's, that's always been my opinion. You're right. I'm doing mostly SCOM, and I had a lot of so let's say trainees over the years and i see that catching up with all the details that are out there is not a very simple task what i'm trying to say is that um, if you want to uh, learn scom you have to invest some time in it uh, some of course reading testing out um, what i like about it is something bob mentioned already is the concept of management packs so you don't have to build the monitoring uh, logic out of uh, from, from scratch for every single technology that is out there. So you have all the Microsoft management packs, you have um, a lot of community free management packs, which are giving you the possibility to monitor other type of workloads. Um, and now back to your question, since I had already the background, monitoring background, it was a lot easier for me to, to catch up with all the topics uh, which are out there um, on the Asian monitor side. Like for example, um, in, on the, in SCOM you have the views. In Asian monitor you have all the workbooks, you have the dashboards, you have the resource overviews. Then uh, in both tools you have the alerts. So you, everybody knows what an alert is. Then in both tools you have, for example, like kind of data warehouse um, where you store, or store history data. That's the, actually the log analytics, the metrics explorer there. Um, then you have also application monitoring, application insights on the one side and application performance monitoring on the SCOM side. So for me, this um, switching, back, switching to Azure Monitor was not that, let's say, hard to do. But again, um, I was many years into monitoring, so I think this was also a contributing factor here. Yeah, True, and, and of course, an advantage of using a cloud-based service, in this case, as your monitor, you don't care about the backend. You know, you, you don't need to maintain, uh, set it up, you don't need to maintain a database or the agents very much. Sometimes you need to deploy some agents, but, you know, that's just one, two clicks one away. Click away. Yeah. And that that's, you don't care about all of the backend stuff. You just focus on the, the front end and the, midi the middle part, which is defining what to monitor. So that's that's also an uh, advantage, uh, you could say. I want to add um, one thing very shortly. Uh, it was actually back to the previous topic, uh, which discussed um, either do we want to take SCOM or do we want to progress with Azure Monitor? I would say both. Um, 
my 99% of my customers currently, they are in a hybrid environment and they're using both tools. Everything which is on primary no doubts come, even for some of the, some of the stuff um, like VMs in the cloud. And again, uh, for other stuff, Azure Monitor. Um, actually, um, many of the customers would like to, let's say, um, have their, they have already made investments into management packs, into development, into building the whole stuff, and they would like to retain those. So using SCOM is, of course, the way to do this. And there is also one additional thing. In SCOM, you have the management pack. You import it, and you automatically get uh, it automatically gets your resources discovered. It monitors them. You have all the thresholds which are set by default. In Azure Monitor, you have to build all the things from scratch. Like Bob already said, um, you can get to a certain level pretty quickly. And afterwards, when you start doing in-depth monitoring, then um, you notice that it's not that really simple. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. sure, Absolutely, yeah. I agree with everything you said. Um, I actually, a couple of years ago now, uh, I myself have written a blog, um, the word Azure Monitor versus SCOM, and how those things um, relate with each other and how they complement with each other. That blog actually, I think that was one of the contributing factors that got me an offer to work with Squared Up, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> that turned out to be quite well. Um, anyways, um, we are almost, well, we are already out of time. Um, and I feared this would happen because all three of us, we go uh, way back and this is an interesting topic for all of us. Um, yeah. and I'm sure we'll keep talking. If given a chance, we'll take another two hours, maybe talk about the same thing. But um, unfortunately, that is not the luxury that we have today. But anyways, thanks again. Um, thanks, Toyan. Thanks, Bob, uh, for joining me today. And I hope uh, everyone who's listening into this episode today has also enjoyed it. Maybe they have, if you have any, maybe complimentary or contradictory opinions, we'll, uh, we'd love to hear about uh, your feedback as well. Um, so thanks again, everyone, for joining. And let's see you again in the next one. Thank you, thanks, guys. Take care. Bye, guys.